Hello and welcome to Measure Twice. Today I'm going to show you how to do this faux brick wall. I've been decorating my dad's house and this wall at the top of the stairs was in dire need of a feature wall. So I decided to go with a brick wall because it went with the whole vibe of the house. Brick slips can be expensive to buy so I opted for faux bricks made with plaster and I'm obsessed with the results and it's so easy to do. So let's get started. <laughs> Starting off you want to create a texture base to look like cement. This will be the grout lines. I accidentally picked up the wrong paint pot here. It was supposed to be lighter grey, but that's okay because we're gonna paint over at the end anyway. You want to add silica sand to the paint to give the paint texture. There isn't a specific amount that you need to add. Just kind of eyeball it until you get a texture similar to this. Make sure to protect your floor because the sand in this paint will make it splatter a lot more than normal paint on a wall. Also use tape around the edges of the wall so you don't get paint on the other walls, although I still got a bit of paint on the other walls because I'm a professional. Buy the cheapest roller and paint brushes you can for this step because the sand will ruin them and it's a nightmare to get out so you may as well just throw them away. Don't worry if the base is uneven because like I said earlier you will be painting over them at the end anyway with a second coat. Now for the bricks. I have made this brick wall downstairs in my dad's house with this technique and for some reason I never looked to this information up and just winged it with a size so I thought rather than going with the traditional size now to just repeat that size on the wall upstairs so it makes the brick look more authentic to the house. So my brick size is 190 by 80 millimeters. However, if you would like to go with an authentic brick size, then you will want to make the bricks 215 by 102.5 millimeters. To create the brick shape, you'll need masking tape, a tape measure or ruler, and a pen or pencil. Great lines of brick walls are usually one centimeter thick. Whereas the masking tape I bought only had 2cm in stock, so I ended up using a Stanley knife and cutting it in half. I had to keep cutting quite a lot all throughout doing this wall, so I would recommend getting 1cm tape if you can to save the hassle of cutting. First you want to make sure that the ceiling is straight. I didn't realise at this point, but the tiny spirit level I was using wasn't doing much, so get a bigger one if you can. If your ceiling isn't straight, you want to apply the masking tape in a straight line at the top first, so that the brick going down won't be slanting. Start by adding the first horizontal line along the ceiling, then measure down your brick height. So 102 5 millimeters if you would like to go with a traditional brick size. I measured down 80 millimeters for my brick size to match the other brick in the house. I marked the lines about every 15 centimeters and applied the tape along those lines. You will need to repeat this over and over and over and over and over again until you're at the bottom of the wall. Now it's time for the vertical lines. This is where you're going to start seeing what your brick will look like. I marked my bricks 190 millimeters along, but yours will be 215 millimeters for a traditional brick and then I applied tape. You want to repeat this all along the row and then for the next row, this bit sounds kind of confusing. My brick is 190 millimeters long, so half of my brick is 80 millimeters so I measured from where the last vertical grout line is back along 80 millimeters and added tape then continued the process of doing the full brick length along to the other side and then repeated that again your brick will be 215 millimeters long so half of that is 107.5 millimeters so apply the same measuring techniques that I did for my brick wall to yours for your wall I also used the spirit level on a lot of them to make sure I was making the line straight now for making the brick I decided to use polyfiller to build up the bricks but it's been years since I did the brick wall downstairs and I forgot just how many tubs of polyfiller it took. Rather than using polyfiller, if you would like to keep the cost down I would recommend buying ready mix plaster. It would be so much cheaper. I used 11 tubs of polyfiller for this which was £63 but you can buy a big container of plaster for £23. I used this kind of spatula to apply it but I was dropping so much of the plaster so I bought one with a bend in it and it was way easier to apply with. Whoa that's so much better. Don't let the thought of plaster intimidate you if you've never worked with it before. I had never worked with it before either but it doesn't have to be neat. That's kind of the whole point. You want it to look textured so it makes it really easy to do. Work in sections so that you can peel off the tape before the plaster is completely dry. I went about a quarter of the wall at a time. Once you remove it all, don't worry if your bricks look a little pathetic at this point because we will be adding a second coat and making it look more 3D. You don't need to add a second coat on every single one of the bricks. 
On the second coat, I decided to focus most of the plaster around the edges of the bricks rather than the centre because this is where the brick will create a shadow and give more of a 3D look. I found a really good way to create a thick edge was to kind of put the plaster over the edge and then wipe the excess away with my finger and it sort of bunched the plaster up at the edges and made it look thicker. You can even add a third coat of plaster if you would like to make them even thicker. Moving on to painting, tester pots are enough to paint the bricks. You only need a little bit of paint on each brick. I managed to get a bunch of tester pots on sale, hence why I have so many, but I had loads of them left over, so you really don't need this amount. I also had a large pot of orange paint left over from another project, so I used that too. You only really need a few colours. This is completely customisable. If you would like grey bricks, go with grey toned paints. Beige bricks, beige tones, white bricks, white tones, etc. These are the tones of colours I use. The best method of applying the paint is using a sponge. I cut mine up into smaller bits because once the paint gets clogged up in there, you will need to replace the sponge with a clean bit. To paint the brick, you basically want to start with a base colour, whether that be light, dark or in between, and then use a different shade on top of that until you like the way it looks. I wanted variations in my bricks, so I tried not to do too many bricks with the same colours close together. The good part is, if you don't like the look of a brick, you can just add more paint on top until you do. I tried to keep the lighter colours on one half of the sponge and the darker colours on the other half of the sponge so that they didn't get all mixed together. Around the edges I used a small paintbrush to get into all the nooks and crannies so that there isn't any white plaster showing, although through some of the brick I decided to keep some of the white to add a bit of extra texture. Once you've painted all of the bricks it's time to go over the grout lines. I now used the right paint colour and a small paintbrush and went over all the grout lines covering any of the brick paint that got onto the grout lines. You want to go into any of the little divots in the brick to make it look more realistic and less structured because bricks aren't completely straight most of the time and creating an imperfect look really adds to the whole effect. Unless you want a sleeker looking brick, then just follow the lines. It's really as simple as that. Five easy steps and you have a realistic faux brick wall. To style my brick, I decided to go with an industrial theme, which I have throughout my dad's house. So I decided to add a wooden shelf and attach that to the wall with pipe shelf brackets. I added an 80 centimeter round black mirror, which looked amazing paired with the brick. Hey. And styled the shelf with faux plants, ornaments and books. I bought these books in a charity shop just for styling on the shelf and the man behind the counter said whoa you must really love to read and I just nodded and agreed because I didn't have the heart to tell him they were only going on a shelf to look nice. <laughs> I also had a tile sample just sitting around the house which you can buy them for pretty cheap and I put the plant pot on top of that and it looked really really cool. Lastly I changed out the blinds for black ones and I am so obsessed with how this area looks now. It looks like a New York apartment like something out of Friends. Using a really simple process I managed to transform this area of the house and I'm so so happy with how it turned out and most importantly so is my dad she's gonna measure Girl with the pain.